BD-5 pilot with you out at the Hillsboro hangar and it's July 7th, a Saturday, and I'm gonna work on duplicating the linkage for that aft nose gear today. So you recall in the parts, it has a call out for this part right here that has to be drilled and tapped and then bent to size. Well, that happens to be this part right here, which I've removed from the right side and I've got the fittings that I have to put on. But I've got to take this tubing right here, and it is a hollow tubing. It does have a hole in it, but that needs to be enlarged. So what we're going to do here is play machinist, and I've uh, purchased a uh, vice, an adjustable vice for the uh, drill press that allows me to take, and I place that drill bit in upside down. That's going to allow me to center it in these clamps and then we'll need to cut this tube to size and then that tube actually is what I'm going to run up inside of the chuck in here so that I make sure that I get a nice centered and aligned drilling out of the inner diameter of that tube so let's go see how that goes so I have that 4130 chromoly skeel cut and the ends sanded so they're nice and smooth and it's just a slight bit oversized so uh, I've got room uh, after bending to get it exactly the size and then I've used the chuck to place that drill bit into the vise and then I'm going to insert this tube into the chuck and then we'll see how we'll do cutting this piece. I'm sure it'll take lots of oil because let me tell you, this stuff is way harder than that aluminum to cut on that bandsaw. So I've got that tubing placed in the chuck now, that drill all aligned and placed, and you can see there's no out of uh, ground with that. So it's going to hopefully make a nice straight and true widening of the uh, inner diameter of that hole and I put a little oil on that and get drill it and there you have it that inner diameter has been increased to the size that we need which is 5 30 seconds or number 21 now I have to uh, tap it and I have to tap it down about three quarters of an inch so we've got one side tapped now and I'll remove tap itself and verify that the uh, that rod end is going to screw in there easily. And there, we have a victory. All that's left now is to bend this piece so it matches Actually, it's the opposite of what this piece is. And there, now we have two parts pretty much matched to each other's bend. Okay, so now I can finish the linkage up on both sides of that to operate the split aft nose gear door. Now, after carefully measuring where those holes were in the nose wheel box for the hinges, I've cut locations where I need to put the hinges on the other side, and we're going to be looking at our options for installing those supports. To tell you I've been busy would be an understatement, but uh, I've got the hinges forward and aft all cut in and set in, and if you hold your mouth right, They'll even operate. But I need to uh, drill and clico those in, get them ready for final pro seal. And they'll match the positions with the ones on the opposite side. And it looks like I'm going to have to order just a little bit more in the way of material so that I can uh, bring that bolt across to here so I have another attachment point for the new linkage that I manufactured this morning. Well, I'm going to pack up for today and uh, hit this tomorrow with a fresh, uh, fresh
fresh set of hands and a fresh mind so I can uh, not make any mistakes on uh, any more sheet aluminum. And I have another viewer question. Alexander Stojanovic out in uh, Japan is building at BD5. Had a question regarding the fuel capacity and if uh, it was a way to put an ox tank, like a central tank, into the BD5 design. And you'll recall I answered a question in the last uh, video regarding uh, the wings. And uh, I was just going to point out the B wing, which gives you a 21 and a half foot wingspan on the aircraft, is a partial wet wing. You see where the dark area of sealant is versus the light area of sealant. Well, that last rib there with the dark is where the wet tank extends to. That's a fuel tank, so that's sealed up to be a fuel tank inside of just that inner two thirds of the wing on a B wing design. On a jet wing, which gives a 17-foot wingspan to the aircraft, the entire wing is used as a wet wing. And so as a result, what we've got is a fuel capacity of 36 gallons in a jet wing, whereas we only have about 26 gallons in a B wing, because the B wing actually is a smaller area that's holding the uh, fuel. There have been some builders, that, remember this is an experimental aircraft, so you can kind of do whatever you want. There have been some builders that have used this area, which, which kind of angles forward behind where the seat is, where that, that uh, firewall is between the engine and the main cockpit for the pilot, and put a small tank here, a little uh, tank that usually what I read is around a six gallon tank that they'll put there. Much easier to put into the jet, by the way, and also a lot easier if you've got the five inch stretch, which I do not have, that BD Micro developed. There uh, is even some larger stretches out there. LD Jeffries uh, flies the air shows in his new jet, and I think he's a 10 inch stretch. So he has enough room for auxiliary tank, also for extra oil for the uh, air shows. So there's lots of options, when, especially when you're still building the aircraft. Once it's already together, it's really hard to take this all apart and put that uh, stretch in. So good luck, Alexander. I hope that answers your questions. And everyone else, have a great weekend. I'll uh, be back at you later. BD5 Pilot out.